Hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, gardening is something that I can't seem to get enough of, even this time of year. But I must admit, the winter is an important time of year for me to refuel and recharge, relax a bit. Now I can look over the past gardening year and revel in some of my victories, as well as begin to think about some of those things I want to do in the season ahead when the garden bursts forth with bloom. Without this time to relax, I don't think I could appreciate the spring the way I do. And I think Mother Nature probably feels the same way. But during these bleak, cold days, there's still a lot going on behind the buds and under that mulch to prepare for spring. Today, we're going to explore some things that go on in the winter that relate to the garden and look at ways to enjoy flowers year round. Winter isn't regarded by many as the most valuable season, but let's face it, without it, the other seasons wouldn't seem so grand. In winter, when most of the country is cold and dark outside, a greenhouse is a pocket of spring, where little guys like these are being groomed and primed for their debut in a few months. While most of us are resting, behind the scenes in facilities like this, the work goes on. Researchers are constantly looking for ways to improve the flowers for our gardens, like this snapdragon, as well as the cut flowers that we can pick up at the florist any time of the year. You see, they're able to do this by fooling Mother Nature. And it takes understanding several things, like a plant's biological clock, as well as highly technical systems for forcing them into bloom. Today, we'll take a closer look at just how they do this, along with some other things that will help us to enjoy these cold winter months. I'll build a simple window box using one of my designs, and we'll learn more about how to grow the world's most glamorous flower, the orchid with one of its leading authorities. And for those who prefer to spend more time in the kitchen, I have a tasty and healthy treat using one of the most ancient of all herbs, garlic, prepared by a world-class chef. So join me as we see some of the best the garden can offer during the winter. If you've ever enjoyed a beautiful bouquet of flowers or seen them in a wedding in the middle of winter, you may have wondered where they came from. Well, unless they were flown in from some foreign country south of the equator, they were probably grown in a greenhouse like this. Here at Pajaro Valley Greenhouses, they've been raising beautiful cut flowers like these for over 35 years. They ship all over the country flowers like roses, gardenias, lisianthus, and lilies as well as old-fashioned garden favorites like snapdragons. Of course, these snaps aren't exactly the variety we might plant in our own flower borders. These are bred especially for growing out of season in a greenhouse. They have a longer vase life, and as you can see, long stems, which make them ideal for flower arranging. If you take a closer look, you'll see how this wire caging acts as a support to the long stems. This is a reminder for me to try to get an early start on caging many of the plants in my garden. Growers are able to force these into bloom by maintaining spring-like conditions in these houses. Temperatures can range from 58 at night up to about 70 degrees during the day. And artificial light can be added when the days become short. Snapdragons are grown directly from seed, and they're planted in these long rows as plugs. These tiny seedlings you see here are only three weeks old. Successive crops are planted each week for a constant supply. Here are some that are a bit older at two months, and these are even larger at three months. They're about four months old when they reach peak bloom, as with this coral-colored variety. These were planted back in the fall. Once harvested, they're taken into the packing facility for sorting, grading, and bundling, and are stored in a nutrient-rich solution before being shipped across the country. I can remember when I was a kid trying to force flowers into bloom during the winter in a small greenhouse I had. Let's just say the results were less than successful. That's one of the reasons I've developed such a healthy respect for people like these here at Pajaro. With 35 acres of greenhouses and over 60 varieties of flowers, 
I think they've gotten flower production down to a fine science. Next, I'll show you a plant that thrives in the winter, a must-have in the kitchen, and one that continues to grow in popularity. And later, I'll put a new spin on an old idea for growing plants in your window and show you a flower to grow indoors that will last for months. How about a way to help keep your fresh cut flowers lasting several days longer? It's really simple. First, remove all the foliage from the stems. And rather than putting them directly into tap water, you might try a solution of 50-50 lemon-lime soda and water and add a couple of teaspoons of bleach to help keep the water cleaner. Now don't just place them in full bright sun in the house, like in a window. This will cause the flowers to decline faster. And of course, the cooler you can keep the room, the longer your flowers will last. Ask any chef, or for that matter, anyone who enjoys cooking, and more often than not, they'll tell you if they only had one herb to choose from to cook with, it would be garlic. Now what's interesting about this curious little bulb is that we've been consuming it for literally thousands of years, both as a way to flavor our food and as a form of medicine. As they say, this plant is both good and good for you. Another interesting thing about it is that 90% of the garlic consumed in this country actually comes from California. Don Christopher, president and founder of Christopher's Garlic Ranch, is one of the largest producers in the state. When he started in 1956, he planted just 10 acres of garlic, and now that's up to 6,500. This field was planted about November the 1st, and um, we, we planted about uh, 1,200 pounds of cloves to the acre, and when it produces, it produces about 12 times what we plant and therefore we get around 15,000 pounds per acre in return. And uh, we're farming right now, I think, a total of almost 5,000 acres of garlic. It does, a lot of it's growing in the wintertime. It, it sets the root system mostly. And then as, as the garlic gets bigger, that's when it starts forming its cloves and, and, uh, and we make a bulb. If we don't have warm weather, we won't have good garlic. The garlic wants sunshine all the time. So if you plant garlic underneath a tree, you won't have much more than a little tiny bulb. But if you get it out where the sun hits it for, for the, the 12, 12 hours a day, you'll have a beautiful crop. And that's why people in the home, they should plant it in a pot or something where the sun hits it all the time. No shade. We do all kinds of things with the garlic. We, we puree it and put it in a jar and it'll hold for two or three years. So we, we do everything we can with the garlic to make it sellable. Garlics has come in all different ways now with the roasted garlic, the dehydrated garlic, the fresh cloves. Everything is, is making a big difference in our business. Not only that, garlic is good for you. And the health aspect is great. And it's helping the sale of garlic. Also, we're getting promotion through all the books. People are writing more recipes. There's sure. just more and more taking place. I, I'm eating the roasted garlic now because I really do like it. Um, it lowers your cholesterol. It thins your blood out so you don't have heart attacks as much and it just, it just make you feel better. And that's what's really helping us, is people feel better eating garlic, and of course the flavor is outstanding. We're gonna harvest this crop latter part of June and first part of July. And so our garlic will be ready for the garlic festival, which is the last weekend in July. And uh, we'll show our, our products there. And of course the, the garlic festival just promotes garlic all over the place. We love it, I gotta tell you. Uh, we started the garlic festival 19 years ago. We're gonna celebrate our 20th anniversary this year, and we're all excited about it. As Americans continue to discover the great flavor and health benefits of garlic, no doubt production of this versatile and ancient herb will continue to grow. Coming up next, I'll take you to the kitchen of one of my favorite West Coast restaurants, where the chef takes fresh garlic and transforms it into a delicious dish. And later, you won't want to miss learning about a gorgeous, long stem flowering beauty, or a workshop project that can be a lot of fun. You know, winter is a time to enjoy warm fires and good food, like a rich, savory soup to help knock off the chill. When you consider just how good garlic is for us and what it can do to enhance foods, 
it comes close to being the perfect complement to many dishes. Here at Montreal's Bistro in Monterey, California, executive chef Tony Baker makes the most of one of the region's shining stars, garlic. So what can we expect today in the way of the soup du jour? Well, uh, one of the most common soups, soups we do, although we try and give it a mix and match, is the uh, cream of roasted garlic and potato. It goes over really well. It's a nice hearty soup, great for those cold days, you know. Um, and we uh, garnish that with a nice Roquefort blue cheese crouton. Gosh, which, sounds great. Yeah, pungent, great. Goes really well, a nice combo. Well, let's see you put it together. All right, well, uh, start with our, our ingredients here. We have some uh, beautiful, um, firm, large cloves of fresh garlic. Right. We also have what we call mirepoix. We have some uh, fresh diced russet potatoes. We have some chopped thyme, some chopped parsley. And then our garnish here, we have some little, uh, uh, this is some bread that we make here and uh, that we pound out and, uh, and, and cook, cut into triangles. And we're gonna use these for our Roquefort blue cheese croutons. This is Roquefort blue cheese, comes from the Roquefort region of France. Beautiful. And what are you gonna start with? I'm gonna start using the, uh, the garlic. We're gonna roast these uh, whole cloves of garlic in the pan with some extra virgin olive oil. Okay, we got our garlic, it's uh, nicely golden. We're bringing out that nice garlic roasted flavor. At this point, we're gonna add our mirepoix vegetables. In this case, we're using a white mirepoix, which just means it doesn't have carrots. And it's gonna be onions, leeks, and celery. We're using about one stick of celery, about half a white onion, and about one medium-sized leek. Okay, at this point, our vegetables are uh, sautéing pretty fast speed. They don't take long, they're cut very small. I'm gonna add the potatoes. Again, russet potatoes. We've got about three medium-sized russet potatoes that are peeled and cut into a small dice. This is what gives the soup the body. It thickens the soup. So I'm gonna add the thyme at this point, which is a pretty robust and hearty herb, which uh, needs to be cooked out. You know, it's not one of those delicate herbs like basil or dill, which should be added at the end of a dish. Um, well, you're generous with it. Oh, absolutely. Fresh thyme is not like dried herb. Dried herbs, uh, you can use about four or five times less than you would of a fresh herb. For the stock, we're gonna at least cover the vegetables with the stock, which is gonna be about two pints. Gonna turn the heat up on that and bring it up to a boil. When it reaches a boil, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and cook that for about 20 to 25 minutes until all the ingredients are soft. So now you're gonna blend all this together. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm using my big old bazooka here. You <laughs> sure are. Not... I don't have one of these, <laughs> so what can I use? Well, they do a very, uh, they do a domestic version of this, a real nice little uh, small white thing that you can buy in the right. store. Or I'm sure most people have uh, a regular blender or sure. a food processor. Right. Uh, any of those things will work just as well. Just gonna blend all uh, the ingredients together. Absolutely. Well, so let her rip. Get... Okay, so we're gonna uh, serve the soup now. To say beautiful consistency, nice and thick, rich, creamy. Serve it in a nice large bowl. The size of this bowl looks daunting, but really the quantity of soup in it is no, uh, not much more than a good sized coffee cup. Right. Okay, we're gonna take our croutons, position nice. it over the top. Artistically placed. And chopped parsley. Uh-huh, and there's where the parsley comes in. Beautiful. And bam. Roasted garlic, potato soup with a rock four cheese crouton. Ready to ready to serve. Bravo, Tony. <laughs>
I put this together last winter. Let me show you how to build one. This is very simple. It's basically four pieces of wood, the top board, two brackets, and a backboard to attach it to the wall, and of course, three clay pots. To put this together, I started with the top. I used a two inch by 12 inch board that's four feet long. I've cut out three holes just large enough for this 10 inch clay pot to drop in. See how the collar or the lip of the pot holds the pot in place. To cut the hole, start with a drill and then use a jigsaw to finish it off. The brackets are made from a piece of the two by 12 board and they're connected by this one by four board that runs across the back. Now this is important because this board is what you'll use to mount it with. I like to use wood screws in assembling these because it keeps the wood from splitting. Now you can put a sealer on this or even paint it, but the great thing about this window box is you can drop in pots of your favorite flowers throughout the season. If you're like me, you must have favorite places you like to visit. You know those places that you visit time after time. Well, this is one of those for me, particularly in the winter when I'm starved for beautiful blooms. This is the orchid zone, and after we've had a chance to look around, I think you'll understand why I keep coming back. Terry Root has created this magical place out of his love of orchids. Each time I visit, I find new species of this magnificent plant I've never seen before. It's obvious Terry loves what he does. He's been in the orchid business for 30 years and has built an empire that just keeps growing and is recognized internationally today. From hybridizing and propagation to selling, it all goes on here each day. Specialists from all over the world come here to buy these exotic plants because Terry has become a leader in the industry. Even though they're experts and see similar places to this, they're always overwhelmed with the collection here. Now Terry likes for people to get excited about growing orchids, and he's always eager to help them become successful. Okay, Alan, I'm gonna start off by repotting this little Catley orchid. First, set this label aside. Loosen the plant in the pot. Right. Now look the, at that. Now these are aerial roots that uh, hold on to the tree in nature. So pull out anything dead. Position it in a new pot with the oldest growth towards the back. I see. Now how do you know which is the oldest growth? Well, you can see the new growth that's flowering. Right. And it grows in a progression. I see. So this would be the back of the plant. Back and of the, the plant. Front flowers on the front. Ideally, the newest growth should be right about in the middle of the pot with the back. I just take a handful of this mix, settle it around it, lightly tap it. You don't want to press all the air spaces out of it, so this is done. The air is the most important. The air is the most important. So it's ready to uh, water and this is all done. The winter months are the most spectacular for many of these beauties which is why it's so refreshing to have some in your home. They bring a little life indoors when it's often unpleasant outside. Just look at all of these gorgeous blooms. You know, the most difficult thing for me is not so much growing one of these, but it's selecting just the one I want. Even though it may be cold and gray outside, there's still a lot going on in the world of gardening. Just look at all of those fresh cut flowers being grown and harvested every day during the winter to help brighten our homes. And of course, Terry has showed us how orchids can be the perfect living companion in our homes during the winter with blooms that can last up to two to three months. I also hope you'll find the time between now and spring to put together my window box. I promise you'll be surprised at how easily it can come together and once planted, nothing short of stunning. Of course, if you get hungry doing all of this, you might try Chef Tony's roasted garlic and potato soup. You'll find that those good things from the garden never tasted so good. You know, it's always astonishing to me that no matter the season, there's always something interesting going on in the garden. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And 
Every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile No, I can't help but smile